Hello and welcome to Aviation 101 with Laura. Today I want to answer a quick question that someone had written in the comments and wanted to know what is the difference between an aircraft dispatcher and a flight follower? I think it was having to do with job postings, but this is a great question because it leads to some regulatory type questions and we wanna unpack those real briefly using 14 CFR. So I have pulled up 14 CFR uh, part 121 subpart T is in tango for flight operations. And if you search 14 CFR part 121, you actually will not really see a flight follower description of the job. So that's probably why it lends some confusion. But uh, if you search part 121, you will see aircraft dispatchers mentioned. Now, why is that? Okay, well, let's take a look at subpart T under flight operations. And I have pulled up responsibility for operational control for domestic operations. So here it is for domestic operations. It says that the pilot in command and aircraft dispatcher are jointly responsible for a list pre-flight planning, doing the dispatch release, delaying the flight, releasing the flight, dispatch release. Okay, and then we have a bunch of things the dispatcher is supposed to do, and the fact that the pilot in command is in fact command of the aircraft. Okay, pretty simple, right? Okay, going back to subpart T, let's look at it in relation to a flag operation. So a flag operation, it almost reads almost exactly the same. So I'm not going to go through that again because it's basically the same type of thing. Okay, but if you go back to the list and you look at the operational control requirements for a supplemental operator, we see that the certificate holder is responsible for operational control. Okay, and this is where it starts really taking a hard left off of what we read for flag and domestic. It says for each person who can exercise operational control, they have to be listed in the operations manual somewhere. Uh, and then it says the pilot in command and director of operations are jointly responsible. And it kind of goes through a whole list of things, initiation, continuation, diversion, termination of a flight, which is actually basically the, de the definition by FAA rules for operational control and it says that the director of operations may delegate the functions for all this but not the responsibility okay so the fa likes to say things like this made a puzzled look not because i'm puzzled but because you might be puzzled but basically this says in plain english that at a supplemental operator and if you don't know the definition of domestic flag supplemental, I'm going to point you to another one of my videos. Here it is, part 121 definitions in 60 seconds. So you can pause this and go watch that and then come back. It'll only take you 60 seconds because literally it's 50 seconds, 57 seconds long. Okay, now that you're back, definition of supplemental operation basically says that one of the key differences is the pilot in command and the director of operations are jointly responsible for operational control. It's basically what 121.537 subpart B says. It also says the director of operations can delegate the functions for operational control. So that means he could de designate the work, could delegate the work to somebody besides the director of operations because the director of operations might be a busy person and cannot do all the operational control functions. But the director of operations, even if that person delegates the functions for operational control, the director of operations cannot des delegate the responsibility for operational control to somebody else. Hmm. So who would the director of operations delegate these functions to? Aha, that is where we start getting into the question of what is a flight follower. So I'm going to pull up now subpart F, still under part 121. And it's it's a little known subpart talks about approval of areas and routes for supplemental operators. So we see that this whole subpart F 
applies to supplemental operators. And at the very bottom of the list, we have 121.125 and 121.127. So let's look at those sequentially. The reason that we have the word flight follower start appearing about supplemental operators is because Part 121 allows a certificate holder to establish a flight following system. It basically says they have to establish a flight following system. And it basically says that people have to do the operational control monitoring type function. And that is part of the flight following system. You can also look at 121.127, which says you have to demonstrate if you're a supplemental operator that you have adequate facilities and people to do the job. So um, to give that information and we have some sort of means of communicating with our flights. Okay. It also says, this kind of goes back to what we previously read. If you're doing supplemental operations, the people who are doing that operational control functions, they have to be shown to be qualified. And so basically what we get is the fact that flag and domestic type operations will employ aircraft dispatchers because 121 requires them to. A supplemental operator cannot delegate the responsibility for operational control it's shared between the pilot in command and the director of operations, but the director of operations can delegate the work part of operational control. And typically they, these operations call these people flight followers. So it's really kind of just like a taking out of 121.125 and 121.127 and saying flight followers are the people that are doing the operational control functions for the director of operations, but the director of operations retains full responsibility for those jobs. This brings up one extra valid point. That means that if you are looking at getting into aircraft dispatch as a career, awesome choice. You should watch my videos about becoming a dispatcher. But let's say you become a dispatcher, you wanted to get into this field and you finish your dispatch training and you're only 21 or 22 years old, you're waiting to turn 23 because that's one of the requirements to become an aircraft dispatcher fully certificated as being 23, you could conceivably get a position as a flight follower working for a supplemental operator doing basically the job of an aircraft dispatcher with the delegated work of operational control, but you actually technically don't have responsibility for the work. Ultimately, that responsibility falls on the director of operations. The director of operations is going to make sure that you're qualified to do the job through the training department, through operational checks, but it's something that you could definitely do before actually having a dispatcher certificate because for a flight follower under part 121, a dispatcher certificate is technically not required. The air carrier could choose to require you to have a dispatcher certificate, but that's not required by part 121. And some of these companies don't require you to have a dispatch certificate. They just require you to still go through their training program. Now, having a dispatcher certificate certainly makes you a more competitive applicant for those types of jobs. So I do recommend getting your dispatch certificate. But if you look for jobs called flight follower, they may not actually require you to have the dispatcher certificate in your pocket. So thanks for watching Aviation 101. Keep the comments coming because honestly, that's where I got the idea for this video. So I love it. And I love to read your comments and hear back from you guys, my watchers and followers and subscribers. So have a fantastic day.